Hello there, fellow Blenderheads. Ben here. Today I wanted to talk about how you can create a material that has random color values applied to various objects that might have that same material applied to them. So if we just take the default scene and I do a few different um, copies of this block, Shift D, letter Y to move on the Y axis. Uh, maybe, yeah, that's fine. And uh, by default, the first cube has a material applied to it. So since I duplicated it, that material is going to go with it. So I now have the same material applied nine times. And that is probably the case for you as well. Press G, Z, 1. And then I can make a floor and put that on the bottom there. OK. If I go into cycles here, I can see what I've done. And if I go into my node editor and select one of these boxes, OK, there's a box that's selected. Um, you can see I have the word material, and it's being used nine times for my nine cubes. There's no material on the floor right now. I'm going to name this cube. And this is a material we're going to work with. So if I were to change, obviously, the color here, they're all going to change the same. There is a node, input object info. And in the object info node is a random um, output. And if you run that random output into something, you're going to get a value between 0 and 1 that will be different for each object. So if I plug this into color right now, it'll give me a grayscale value. But it's going to be between 0 and 1. So some of them are pretty white, and some of them are pretty black. So that's giving me a value of 1. That's giving me a value of 0. Now just because it's bugging me, I'm going to pick the light, which by default is a point light. But I prefer a sunlight. I find they're easier to, uh, they just look a bit nicer for me. So there's my sunlight, and we will rotate that on the z-axis for no good reason at all. <laughs> I'm just going to spin it 360. Maybe I'll make the size real big. Makes nice soft lights. It looks kind of like a cloudy day if you up that softness. OK, so we'll start with that. Let's get back to our node. So I've got this random, select the box, this random object info going into my color. Um, that's the beginning, but that is not at all the end. If I were to take a color hue saturation node, control drag across that line to cut it out. And let's uh, pick a color here. Well, let me just run the color in to my diffuse color. And let's pick a color, maybe like a yellowish color. And now, again, keep in mind that random is from 0 to 1. So if I run that random into value, by default, my value is 1. If my value were to go down to 0, everything would go black. So I've got 0 to 1. And I can go higher than 1, too, but right now we're worried about 0 to 1. So I run my random into that, and it will randomly assign a value to each box okay, that is 0 and 1. Now, one thing that's important to keep in mind here is that even if I have more than one object info node, and I'm just going to switch and plug that one into value now, um, you'll notice it gives me the same result. It, it's the, the point here is that there's not a seed. If you're familiar with random numbers, you can do a random seed. You can change the seed number. And this is available in a lot of places in, in, uh, in Blender, but it's not apparently, as far as I can tell, available for the object info node. So you're stuck with whatever random number is put in there by default, and you can't have more than one random number per cube just by using the object info node. And a lot of times when you're doing this, you might want to have a random number for the value, a random number for saturation, a random number for hue. And if I plug them both into hue and saturation, what you'll notice is that as they get darker, they get less saturated. And as they get brighter, they get more saturated because it's the same number that's feeding both of them. And same thing with the hue. They're going to get cooler as they get brighter, as they get more saturated. They're going to get warmer and darker and less saturated all together. But we want them to be separate. We want some of them to get brighter while they're getting warmer, and some to get brighter while they're getting cooler, some to get darker, some to get more saturated, less saturated. We don't want there to be any kind of correlation between each element. So I'm going to show you today a way to create a seeded, or a sort of seeded, random number. This was a trick I learned on Blender Artists. And one of these days, I'm going to find that post again. and. Uh, give credit to this person because it's a really nice, it's an, it's an elegant technique. Uh, we are going to go into our converter math. And we're going to use a sign node. Now, I brought up a description of the sign node on the Blender web page. The trig functions of sine, cosine, tangent use only the top socket and accept values in radians between 0 and 2 pi. 0 and 2 pi. In other words, when you get to 0, I think, if I'm not mistaken, 
zero is either going to give you, I think zero will give you zero, actually. Two pi will give you zero. And then halfway between or partway between, you'll go down to negative one and you'll go up to positive one. So you go back and forth essentially between negative one and positive one. I don't want to give you the exact numbers. Hopefully someone knows what it is and they're screaming at the screen right now. And I appreciate you. I appreciate that you're doing that. But the bottom value just doesn't matter. I can put anything in there. It's really not going to matter. What matters is the input and it needs to go between zero and two times pi. So if we do another math node and set it to multiply, we can do 2 times pi, 3.14, 6.28. That's not perfect, but it's close. And actually, let's do the bottom one, 6.28. It really doesn't matter. Um, and I'm going to do my random number in the top. So now I'm going, instead of from 0 to 1, I'm going from 0 to 6.28. And that's going to go into my top sign value. And that's going to go into, let's say, the value. And you'll see a lot more of them are black. And that's because the sign here is going from negative one to positive one. It's going back and forth between those, okay? Negative one to positive one. But my value at zero already makes it black. So everything from zero down to negative one is turning black. So what I need to do is I need to find a midpoint, okay? A zero value, or in a sense, when it's halfway between zero, between negative one and one, in other words, when it's a zero, what do I want this value to be? And in this case, we, I want my value to be one. So I'm going to add another math node. This one's going to be add. I'm going to set it to one. So I plug my sign result into there, plug the add node into value. And now I'm getting a range from zero to two. Okay, because it's going between negative one and positive one. I'm going from zero to two. All right. So that's good, that's nice, wonderful, wonderful stuff. I'm gonna do one thing, one more thing, and then we'll do one more, more thing. Um, now we're going from zero to two, but let's say we wanna make it a more narrow range. Let's say we don't wanna go all the way from zero to two. Let's say we wanna go from say 0.9 to 1.1, just have a range rather than of two, all the way down one, all the way up one, only go down 0.1, go up 0.1, a value of 0.2. Well, we know sine is from negative one to positive one. Let's do another math node. If I now make this a multiply and set this to 0.1, now it's going from negative 0.1. When I get negative one output here, it becomes a negative 0.1. And when I get a positive one output from this little setup here, I get a positive 0.1. So it's a much more narrow range. And if I increase this slider, you'll see over here on the side, it increases the contrast in value. Okay, and I can increase that slider a whole bunch. Now this has not yet solved the problem of having uh, more than one random value. And the way you fix it is actually really, really simple. I did this little step of putting in pi times two, and I hate to say it, but I really didn't need to. I can make this value anything I want. And look what's happening over there on the bottom right corner. Those colors are just changing. I'm basically doing a random seed. If you go slowly, you'll see it kind of does a slow shift between things. So it's not exactly a random seed, which would just randomly be swapping it all over the place, at least as I understand random seed. But what I do is I like to do something like this, one, two, three, four, and that gives me a value. Or I could go one, two, three, four, five. It gives me a different value. One, two, three, four, five, six. The catch here is that no matter what I put into sign, sign will return a value between negative one and positive one. And so sign is just like this beautiful filter. It's like the ultimate you know, organ of this system. It's gonna convert whatever you throw into it to zero and negative one as long as it's larger than two times pi. So just make sure you do that and keep these values really, really big. Or you could put in a safety and make sure that you're always, say, adding pi, two times pi to it or something like that. But as it is, um, this works really well. So I have sine. I don't really need to look at that. Multiply. I want to change that number. So I'm going to call this here. If press the letter N, you can bring up your properties. Instead of calling it multiply, I'm going to call this variance. Okay, how much it varies, how much change there is, okay? This value of one, I'm going to call this midpoint, because that's what it is. Um, if I were to plug this into hue, it's even if I turn my 
variance way down, like in fact, if I set it to zero, so there is no change at all, it still makes it blue, even though my input is yellow. And the reason for that is because my midpoint is wrong. Hue by default wants to be 0.5. When it's 0.5, you get the hue of the color you input. So if I change my value to 0.5 now, whether it's plugged in or not, I get the same hue. And as I increase my variance just by tiny bits, I get these slight differences in hue or I can crank my variance up a lot and get very large differences in hue. As soon as I hit one, it's gonna be playing with the whole spectrum and everything beyond one is like going way past the spectrum. But with hue, when you pass the spectrum, you come back to the original spectrum. Spectrum. So I'm just gonna do point, point zero two five. Mm, point zero five two. Okay, that looks really nice. So I've got this nice setup. I've got my multiplier and I'm gonna call this seed-ish, because it's not a seed, but it's kind of a seed, okay? Sign is what it is, variance is what it is, mid, well, variance is the variance, midpoint is a thing, so you might change any of these three values. So what I suggest you do is select these five nodes, press Control G and create a group, take your group input and run your group input to each of these three values, so my seed-ish, I take this little group input circle and run it into my seed-ish. And in my properties, click on value and change that to say seed-ish or whatever you want to call it. I like ish. Ishes are awesome. And when I plug that in, I get another empty circle here in group input because I can do as many of these as I like. And I'll plug this one into variance and I'll call this one, click on value and say variance, okay? Or, you know, how much randomness there is. I'll do it again for midpoint. I'll name that midpoint. And you'll notice there's a default value. So my midpoint's default value is 0.5. My variance dpoint value, uh, default value is 0 0.052, which maybe I'll make that 0.1 just for fun. And uh, my seed ish is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, which is great. I could live with that. And the output um, is going to be some sort of random number. So I could even call that if I wanted to random number. If I tab out of that, I can call this random number generator, okay? And I've got this great seed-ish. So here I have my midpoint is 0.5, my variance is 0 0.052, and I can change any of these and it will change what's going on. I can change my seed to some other number, one, two, three. Where are you, buddy? One, two, three just get a different seed, and then I can change my midpoint. Well, for my hue, I want my midpoint to be five, but I'm gonna shift D, make a copy of that, run it into saturation, and now I want my midpoint to be one, and I want a different seed, so everything doesn't correlate, and I'm gonna, you know, up my, ooh, if you get too high, you get these crazy negative saturation values, which are like super strong complementary saturations. I don't really, I'm sure there's a mathematical reason for that, but it doesn't exactly make sense to me. Um, and now we'll duplicate another one and run that into value and give me yet another different seed, one, two, three, four, five. There's no real reason behind doing one, two, three, fours and just having it sequential numbers. It's just, it's easy for me to remember. Okay, midpoint is one for the value. Variance is, you know, whatever I feel like it being. Um, and there you go. So I can make this uh, probably a lot more subtle, which is, I, for me at least, where this stuff is really useful. If you're doing something like, um, uh, maybe leaves on a tree and they're objects. This, this needs to be objects. In fact, I should probably call this random number generator with objects in the name because this, this, does, this will not work for things like an array where it's just one object. I don't think it'll work for particles. There are other ways to do that, I'm pretty sure. Um, it mostly just works for a lot of objects. So I, I use this sometimes, for instance, if I have um, a scene that has a lot of paper in it. And I, I have this great paper material and I can sort of apply it to lots of stuff just kind of generically without having to think about it much. Um, but if I put in something like this, each piece of paper has small differences in how dark it is, maybe just along the edges, I could apply a different color to it, slight differences in color. Let's change our, let's see, let's make our hue be not quite so much and our value be not quite so much. And uh, yeah, I mean, I just, I love that. That's a fantastic effect. And if we change our hue to something else um, or our saturation to something else, we still get these slight, you can see these slight variations in color, 
which is uh, just fantastic, just fantastic. Thanks for watching and uh, happy blendering.